It's good old-fashioned pub fare with a modern twist. And more and more, this is what diners are turning to when they eat out. It's all about community and enjoying yourself and being casual now. The West's Rob Broadfield says it's easy to make your favourite pub grub at home. Cooking pub meals at home, never been more easy. Rob sharing three of his favourites, chicken parma, pork belly sliders and good old bangers and mash. You just push it up market a little bit, so you're still cooking bangers and mash at home, but you know, get the right potatoes. Don't get a roasting variety, get a steaming variety or a mashing variety. What variety are these, Rob? Well, these are what you would call sort of floury potatoes. You get the ones with the yellow flesh on them, um, like the purple potatoes and those sort of... They're great for roasting. These are much better for mashing because they're a so-called floury potato. They're quite wet. But any white potato with a pale skin basically is the potato you're after. Now add just a little bit of plain flour and that'll turn the butter in the pan into what, in a roux, which is the basis of all white sauce, as most chefs would know. Cook that through and then add some chicken stock. You can leave it at that, but Rob adds a bit of a twist, marrow. We blanch them off, you just leave them in the water for a couple of minutes, you don't want to lose all the lovely fat, and it just separates the protein from the bone, so you can pop out the marrow really easily. Well, this isn't bangers and mashes I would do them, what have we got here? Well it sort of is, because I mean the only difference between this sausage and say something you might buy in a supermarket is this is butcher made, which means it doesn't have so much chemicals in it, it doesn't have so much filler. In fact this sausage from a well known butcher around town is just pork and fennel and salt, right, and that's about it. These are the beautiful sarnies. Next on Rob's pub grub menu is pork belly. Rob, what are we doing with the pork belly? Well, we're going to make pork, little pork belly sliders. Everybody loves them. You know, the little gorgeous little brioche bun, lovely pork. We're going to get some crunch on it and crisp on it. You score it about the thickness you want each slice to be. So if you see what I'm doing, this will be about the size of the slices that we put into our buns. While the pork belly is cooking, Rob cuts up a vegetable trivet. Basically, it's a layer of veggies you put on the bottom of the pan to separate the meat from the base. After 30 minutes crisping at high heat, the pork comes out and onto the trivet. And it just sits on top like that. Sits on top like that. Turn the oven down from 230, right the way down to 160. That cooks for about an hour. In the meantime, Rob makes a jalapeno mayonnaise and a red cabbage slaw. Both will be served together in the slider. Smelling there you amazing. go. Graham, as promised. Looks good, doesn't it? Beautifully roasted. Phil's been cooking for about 90 minutes at a low temperature. Yeah, I'm sure that's, see that. that's the noise you want to hear. Cut up the meat, add the mayo and the slaw, and you've got pork belly sliders. And this is how they're meant to be eaten, of course, just exactly. like this. Standing up. Mmm. How's that crunch? Mm. If that wasn't enough, the final fare is chicken parma. Get your skinless breast from the supermarket. Comes with a little fillet on the bottom. So ideally, you take that off and use it for something else. I do, anyway. Now it's too fat for one fillet, so run your knife down the middle. Make sure you don't cut yourself. If you don't have a meat mallet, mm. I think probably a lot of people do, um, then it's a really simple way to do it. Grab a bottle of wine. Oh. There you go. That's easy. With the double benefit of uh, having a drink afterwards. <laughs> Dip the fillets in flour, egg, and then breadcrumbs. Use fresh or panko crumbs, and then into a fry pan. So there you go, Graham. Now the secret is to half cook it, yep. because it's going to finish in the oven, of course. So here's our store-bought tomato sauce. Now I stick the whole pan in the oven, saves you transposing it to oh, another plate. Okay. Now if you wanted to amp it up a little bit, you could buy buffalo mozzarella. It's good, then, doesn't it? So this will go back in the oven, right. just really until the cheese melts. And we can eat it just like that, or of course you can have it with a salad, you can have it with chips. Yes. Roast potatoes are great with a parmy. Um, Whatever. And if you're so inclined, tomato sauce. Seriously, how tender is that? It's very tender. And uh, tastes like a pub one, Rob. Don't be afraid of the butter, don't be afraid of the cheese. You're not going to do it every night, so just enjoy it.